Over the past 25 years, two massive trends have started to shape healthcare. First, the recognition that patient engagement and patient-centered care is the key to achieving health for all. Second, massive explosion in information and computer systems have allowed us to have tools that can assist people every day in being healthy. Project Health Design is an initiative funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to bring these two trends together. Observations of daily living are the subtle cues that people use to understand their health. They might be behaviors, thoughts, attitudes. They may be the individual's ability to do things that are important to them. This was a real collaboration. Doctors and nurses, people who had health concerns, computer technology designers all got together to understand the problems of managing health in everyday living and then either design new technologies or repurposed existing ones to provide the tools to capture information, communicate it to clinicians and make sense of the health lives of people. The Breathe Easy app involved two components. The first was a smartphone app on an Android platform that the patients used to enter their observations of daily living. The clinicians had a web-based dashboard that they could use to monitor the condition, respond uh, appropriately to things that they saw there, such as peak flows that were falling or not improving, missed medication doses, those types of things. We definitely saw changes in treatment plans. We had a couple of patients whose diagnosis changed from asthma to COPD, other patients who began more advanced therapies, and we even had one patient who started a controller medicine without an office visit who improved remarkably at that point. Chronology MD empowers the patient to take control of their health. It allows them to monitor trends in their symptoms. By informing us of these trends, we can make treatment changes if necessary. Sometimes it'll prompt a, an urgent visit or a, a visit to the office sooner than they would um, normally um, have one. The data that's recorded by the youth is collected on an iPod to see what they were doing in their daily lives that might be impacting health. Observations of daily living are really powerful for patients. Part of the reason is that the choice of observation is not determined by the clinician. It's not the doctor or the nurse telling the patient, this is important for you to collect. It's the patient that decides what's important and relevant for them. We had very good results from this project. On average, they reduced their waist circumference by one and a half inches over six months, which is a significant reduction. They also increased the, what's called their patient activation level. This is their ability and confidence in managing their health. So our intervention also increased their own self-confidence in health management. One of the challenges in Crohn's is that it changes so much day to day and there's a lot of uncertainty in managing so many different symptoms. Patients typically have a few minutes to recite a lot of detailed medical information from ad hoc memory. So we wanted to provide a way for patients to share that information visually. By capturing all of this data, patients can tell a story to their provider when they see them. Healthcare happens outside of the doctor's office. And so when you're able to capture data from outside the doctor's office and bring that into the clinical exchange, you can have a much more guided discussion. Many of our preterms are seeing three or four physicians a week. They may see a cardiac specialist and a lung specialist. 
And so it's very hard for these different physicians who are all trying to treat the patient to know what the other ones are doing. So what we're trying to do with our app was really to support this kind of information transfer amongst the different clinicians and also with the parents. The parents referenced data and shared it with their clinicians about a third of the time in our study, which may sound low, um, but actually bringing data from place to place um, and having the clinicians actually look at it like that, 30% is pretty high. We want to know if the baby's developing well, so we really have the opportunity now to know what was going on very early on and see what those impacts are over time. We think that sensors can be really effective at helping uh, people like elderly and other vulnerable populations. In particular, elders tend to be pretty sensitive about having technologies in their home, particularly new technologies, and these sensors that we can put into their homes to track ODLs can be almost invisible. Right now, um, the current medical system being what it is, uh, it takes a long time for changes in cognitive behavior, or cognitive ability to be detected over time. The goal of DwellSense is really to focus on using sensors to track a cognitive ability throughout the day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and provide that data to clinicians and to elders alike. I think the most significant behavior changes we saw in the seniors that had our displays is that they took their medicines more regularly. We saw that they made fewer misdials when they were making phone calls. We saw that they were more attentive to the coffee making task. We've demonstrated that sensors can be used to really perform assessment over a large, long term and large scale number of people. What that means is that we don't have to just limit the uh, application of this technology to elders, but it can really be applied to any vulnerable population that we want to monitor. We've changed the face of healthcare. We now know that by providing patients with tools to understand their health in everyday living, their clinicians can better understand and better treat health problems, and we can improve the health for everyone, everywhere.